my friend, welcome to this video and thank you for watching. Today I wanted to talk to you about public speaking and give you some tips and clever hacks to work on overcoming the actual fear, having an easier time speaking publicly and doing it in such a manner to where you're very successful. Make sure to take down some notes, it will help set the points we'll go over and rewatch this video as you get closer to a time when you need to speak in public just to freshen up on the ideas. Please make sure you're subscribed, you can click below, this channel is all about building a beautiful life from the inside out and don't forget to enter in the Sephora gift card giveaway. I will link the video that explains more in the description bar below and with that said, let's get started. Here's a little nugget of information. I actually had no idea about this until a few years ago, but the fear of public speaking is also known as glossophobia. Glossophobia has its roots in social phobia. Now here's what. Genetic information has been passed on from cell to cell for generations. We have data that is wired into our DNA that was placed there by our parents, who got it from their parents and their parents' parents and so on. This information has traveled for many thousand years and I think it was Scott Burkun who reference the wearing of our brain being hundreds of thousands of years older than the history of public speaking. He associated public speaking with a tactical position, basically standing alone in an open place with no spot to hide, without a weapon to protect yourself and a whole bunch of eyes on you. Back in our operational history, that pretty much meant you'd be attacked and eaten by something. So our ancestors have developed a fear of this sort of situation, a fear of being singled out, which used to be associated with death. That bit of cellular information has been transmitted from generation to generation and it's that copied DNA that we are born with. And though we may not fear getting eaten by wild animals so much now, the fear of being singled out remains and in more modern times that essentially translates into the fear of being judged by others and of being embarrassed and that is social phobia. What's important to take out of all of this is the difference between a real disaster versus an imaginary one. Our brains cannot tell the difference between the two and that is important to know because it's the first step in overcoming the fear of public speaking. So when you feel the physical effects of that fear, the thoughts racing through your mind, the attention issues and forgetfulness, the shortness of breath, crackling of the voice and chest tightening up with panic, ask yourself, is the fear real? Or imaginary. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. So do you know for a fact that you will be terrible, that you will fail, fall, forget something? Whatever your fear may be, do you know for sure that it will become a reality? Interrupt the fear with this thought process and take deep breaths in and out as you're rationally talking to yourself and the more you will interrupt the fear as it's happening, the more power you will regain over it and be able to take back your life. Tip number two is to prepare your speech and practice, of course. To prepare the speech, start with a basic outline. A logical sequence is basically opening, followed by the main points, and then closing with a summary. Take the general idea of what you want your overall content and message to be, then break that down into subpoints that are easy to memorize. One easy way to craft your presentation and be able to memorize it is by imagining you're giving the people a tour of your home. Your first point will be the entryway. The second Second point will be taking them through the hallway or the living room, then you go into the bedroom, bathroom and so forth and this association will not only allow you to not get points mixed up and be all over the place, but it will create subconscious memory triggers that will make it easy for you to pull from the memory bank on presentation day. After you have your presentation put together, you have to practice. Start by practicing just with yourself to take some of the edge off and maybe finesse some of the ideas, then start recording yourself. Now, I recommend recording only your voice at first, practicing that out a few times and only then doing the whole visual as well. The reason I personally prefer this approach is because when you see yourself on video for the first time, you are bound to hate just about everything about you and your performance and that can be unnecessarily discouraging. So if you start by fixing the audio first, making any changes in tone or enunciation as you see fit, when it comes to the full body shot, you'll have the physical aspect to worry about more, not everything imaginable, like your voice, your body, your content, etc. and get overwhelmed. Does that make sense? 
I recommend at least six practices, but no more than eight. Practice a few times with yourself just to kind of hear your own voice and get the material down. Practice twice with the audio so you can continue getting the content more deeply encoded, but working on your verbal delivery as well. And then twice with video so your material and audio get even more practice while making some key physical improvements as well. Too much practice equates to stress to me. That's why I would not do it more than eight times. Besides, when you know the material too well, you can be sloppy because eh, you got this. One last thing about practice runs. I don't recommend doing all the practicing same day. Space the practice throughout the course of a week because that is how you really encode the material in your long-term memory. Make sure to think of your transitions ahead of time as well. Basically, how you will link one idea or PowerPoint slide to the next. Some examples would be now that we established X or talking about X, let's go into how blah 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 or the next point is especially interesting because XYZ, something like that. Now, here is a very powerful tip. Make sure to write this down. Visualize your presentation. Visualizing is instrumental in developing a skill and Harvard University has actually shown that in one of their studies. Top athletes, for example, use visualization. Before competing, they play the game or they run the track in their minds and they see themselves winning. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge and he used visualization throughout his entire life. Use this your advantage. Sit or lay down and go through your speech from the first words that come out of your mouth to the very last. Feel yourself giving this presentation or speech and feel yourself doing it perfectly. See yourself succeeding. Next tip is to put yourself out there. Getting out of your comfort zone is the fastest and most efficient way to get more relaxed with public speaking. Toastmasters International and public speaking meetups can help with that. You can offer to speak at your kid's school, maybe in your volunteer group or a workshop at your place of work. Offer yourself to speak and the more you will practice, the more comfortable you'll become. An hour or so before your speech, move your body a little bit, just lightly. You could do a few squats or maybe take the stairs for a few floors. You should do that to get your blood circulating and send oxygen to the brain. Progressive muscle relaxation exercises will be instrumental not only that week but the day of, of course. I've talked about these exercises and how much they help with anxiety and things like that so I will not go into any details today but I will link in the description box two videos where I talk about this and give you some very practical exercise options. Now, you can also stand about a foot away from a wall, place your hands flat, breathe in and then push against the wall. Your abdominal muscles will contract and then as you breathe out, don't let all the air out like this. <sighs> push that out through your teeth instead with your mouth slightly open like this as you push the wall. <sighs> Do this a few times and you will also help take some of the edge off. Now, as humans, we evolved to have a fight flight or freeze response to danger. As you're thinking of public speaking or getting ready to do it and your adrenaline increases, that adrenaline will send the blood to this fight flight freeze areas of the brain at the base of the skull. So to encourage blood circulation to the other parts of the brain that you need in order to get on that stage and do your thing the right way, I learned from an article 10 years ago to gently press the forehead, particularly push up on the raised, more bony parts of your forehead. Really push. I don't want to take my makeup off, so I won't push today, but you get it. Sugary beverages are horrible before speaking. They will dry out your mouth. So sip on water that's warm or at room temperature instead, and maybe squeeze in a little bit of lemon to help lubricate your throat. Power posing for two minutes before doing your presentation is very helpful because holding a position that expands your body will result in a higher level of testosterone in your body while lowering the levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. I will link a TED talk in the description that explains power pose it's only about 20 minutes long and I really recommend watching it after this and talking about our presence be assertive in your communication start the speech strong with a powerful opening that could be either a funny joke an interesting story or a mind-blowing fact keep your back straight and tall while relaxing the meat you know, your skin. I like to think of my body as a kebab with the back firm, like the stick and then the meat hanging on the side, just kind of like tender and relaxed. Stand tall, spine straight, shoulders back, keep your chin up and smile no matter what. Go up on stage with a smile on your face, talk with a smile on no matter how faint and end with a smile on your face. Smiling helps close sales. This way of carrying yourself too will also fool the brain into thinking that it's more confident. Be conversational in your delivery. Avoid sounding like you're reading what you're saying or your 
awfully rehearsed, just keep a conversational tone in your speech. Avoid talking too fast because that will interfere with your breathing patterns. Trust me, I know that. You will become short of breath and that can lead to panic. Speak with passion, regardless of the topic or how interested or uninterested you are in it. That is how you draw in the audience. During your speech or presentation, try focusing on your content, not so much the audience, because you may get a false interpretation from their reaction to you. Some people may naturally look bored, but they may be in fact listening to you. Other people are bored in general. No matter the occasion, you could be the president talking on stage. So if you judge your performance simply by looking at them, you you may get discouraged and then your momentum will be affected. Make eye contact and look around, yes, but keep your mind deeply focused on the material you're delivering. A practice run in front of your friends can actually help you achieve that. Don't be afraid of any moments of silence. If somebody asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, you don't have to admit that you don't know. You can simply defer to asking the audience if anyone in the audience knows the answer. When you know something, you're proud of it. So you're gonna raise your hand and you're gonna say yes. So the odds of somebody raising their hand is very high. Avoid using PowerPoint slides because that can put your audience to sleep. Avoid standing behind podiums or tables in essence. Try not to have any physical barrier between you and the audience. And I've always said this, fake it till you make it. You can absolutely force your brain into new behavior and when your mind changes, incredible things happen. Things around you change, your body language will change and you will be on the up and up. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, please give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more. Let me know what other videos you'd like me to make and don't forget to enter in the giveaway. I love you for being here, thank you for watching. May good luck and fortune follow you everywhere you go today and every day. I'll see you again in a few short days in a new video and that's it. Goodbye and good luck.